My name is Marley Brown. I work for the Ministry of Health as a social advocate for nutrition welfare. I'm also the head of department for the nutrition in uh, Toledo District. Today I'm here to share my testimony with you all. I find it tragic that men use the bodies of women and girls as their battlefield and it elicits so little attention from our society. The socialization of boys regarding masculinity is often at the expense of women. We don't raise boys to be men. We raise them not to be women or gay men. We teach boys that girls and women are less than, and that leads to violence by some and silence by many. Violence against women is a countrywide yet still hidden problem. Freedom from the threat of harassment, battering, and sexual assault is a concept that most of us have a hard time imagining because violence is such a deep part of our cultures and of our lives. Violence against women is woven in such a deep part of our lives to an extent that many of us who are victimized, myself included, feel that it is our fault. Many of those who perpetrate violence feel justified by strong societal messages that say any form of violence is acceptable. Every day we see images of male violence against women in the news, on TV shows, in the movies, in advertising, and in our homes and workplaces. It is a fact of life for women of all ages, races, and classes can be a victim of gender-based violence. I have never been free of the fear of abuse. From a very early age, I, like most women, have thought of abuse as a part of my natural environment. I never asked why men were abusive until it happened to me. I simply thought it was one of the many mysteries of human nature. In the broadest sense, violence against women is any violation of a woman's personhood, mental or physical integrity, or freedom of movement through individual acts and societal oppression. It includes all the ways our society objectifies and oppresses women. Every form of violence threatens all women and limits our ability to make choices about our lives. As more and more women talk with each other in the recent waves of women's movement, it became apparent that violence against us occurs on a massive scale, that no woman is immune, and that family, friends, and public institution have been cruelly insensitive about it. Today, I'm going to share with you my story. Who would have thought that a woman like me would end up in such a violent relationship? It wasn't the first time that he hit me, but perhaps the most violent episode. I began to believe it was my fault and felt like I was on this roller coaster that I couldn't get off. I have spent countless hours crying, and he would come back begging for another chance. Of course, I gave him. How did I cope being in an abusive relationship? Inner strength. I hoped and prayed that he would change. He never did. I had my friends over just like every other Friday night. I was excited about us moving into our new home, and I had hoped that things were going to be different, better, you know? He started drinking, but I wasn't worried because I figured our relationship was going great. He didn't hit me for three months. He changed, or so I thought. We went out to the local bar and we were having fun. It was now time to go home and he couldn't find his vehicle keys. He started to yell at me. My friends looked at me surprised while I pretended that this was the first time he behaved in this demeanor. He started choking me and slapping me. I was very embarrassed and my friends quickly decided to look for the keys. Marley, we found the keys. I thought, okay, that was a close one. But while driving home, in silence, he looked at me and said, watch where we'll catch you when we reach home. My heart sank because I knew exactly what that meant. I was distraught and frightened, but tried to maintain composure until we arrived home. He started yelling and I tried to calm him down because I was scared of what would happen to me. 
I plead and beg for him to stop, but every blow was harder and harder. He was choking me very hard. I couldn't breathe, and my head was slammed over and over and over onto the cold cement wall. I didn't fight back this time because my sister came to spend the weekend and I was afraid that she would hear me trying to fight him off. The next thing I knew, he was dragging me in my hair and slapping me in my face. Then more punches, which eventually made my face bleed. I started to choke. I was choking on my own blood, passing out on the floor. I regained consciousness and realized someone was yelling and slapping me. Apparently, he dragged me onto the bed and started to slap me. But I didn't have any fight left in me and was passing out for a second time. This was when he bit me. Imagine human teeth sinking into my flesh. I had to do something. I started to grab him in his hair and scream until he let me go. He walked away and brought me a towel and helped me wipe my face. I started to laugh hysterically because I just couldn't believe what was happening to me. The next morning I woke up and there he was standing over the bed ready for wrong two. Imagine being beaten badly twice in less than 24 hours. That morning I looked in the mirror and could not believe the hideous reflection staring back at me. My entire body was shaking uncontrollably as I sunk to the floor screaming in anguish. My left eye bulged, my forehead split open, my hands severely bitten, my entire body bruised and aching. It's very hard to describe the emotions that flooded my soul that Saturday morning. I felt broken, threatened, scared, humiliated, and battered. I sat there thinking to myself, I had to leave one way or another, but how? It wasn't an easy decision because absolutely no one knew. How do I tell my parents or friends what happened? How do I explain to everyone that there is so much pain behind my beautiful smile? How do I move on? How do I deal with the depression and shame? That morning, I kneeled down and cried out to the Lord and asked for strength. The hardest thing to accept was that I was being abused. I kept making excuses. I kept blaming myself. The shame I felt was unbearable. No one expects a woman like me, who is educated, independent, and who thinks highly of herself, to be in such situations. We all believe that women who are uneducated, unemployed, or dependent are the only ones who suffer in silence. This evening, I stand here to send a message. Stop domestic violence. Break the silence. Let's orange Belize. Let's orange the world. I am one of the many faces of gender-based violence, unmasked and ready for deliverance. After all those hurts, scars and bruises. After all those trials, I really made it true. I survived that which was supposed to kill me. So I straighten my crown and walk away like the queen I am. I was never to blame. I was no longer afraid. Don't let I'm sorry make you think about walking back into that nightmare. The longer you dance with the devil, the longer you remain in hell. You owe so much better to yourself. And remember, you left for a reason. He doesn't have to hit you for it to be abused. He can degrade, humiliate, blame, curse, manipulate, or try to control you. It's still violence. You are allowed to terminate toxic relationship and walk away from people who hurt you. You are allowed to be selfish and unforgiving. You don't owe anyone an explanation for taking care of yourself. Never be bullied into silence. Yes, you don't have to make a social media post as I did, which attracted thousands of followers, but there are other means to speak out. Do not allow yourself to be made a victim and accept no one's definition of your life. To those women who are currently going through abuse, you may feel weak, 
but within you is the strength to live. Within you is the strength to overcome. Don't ever be ashamed of your story, for it will inspire others. I have endured. I have known the hardships of being abused, but here I stand moving forward and stronger each day. I hope very much that today might mark a moment when we start to pull back the shroud of silence. I hope we can talk about what is happening behind closed doors across this country. And I hope these brave people have the courage to speak out, to be victors, not victims. I am a survivor and I would show the world my uplifting spirit every time I smile.